This video suggests how to make metachlorians work, besides cutting them completely, starting with one tiny little change in numbers that could have drastically altered the entire Star Wars franchise. But first, a little bit of backtracking. We learn in Episode 1 that Anakin had no father. Who was his father? There was no father. It seemed kind of strange at the time. Most people rolled their eyes at the heavy-handed biblical parallels. Nobody was impressed. And George never really made much of it other than this one line. Can you help him? But what if he had made more of it? Particularly in Episode 2. Because we learn from Obi-Wan's journey in Episode 2 that a clone army was commissioned at the behest of the Senate nearly ten years ago. They say Master Sabadeus placed an order for a clone army at the request of the Senate almost ten years ago. But, and here's where the numbers comes in, what if Lucas had pushed that number back further? What if he had made it uncannily reminiscent of Anakin's age? Now consider this for a moment. Why start a clone army at the same time that Anakin is being conceived by metachlorians? The answer could have been left for fans to speculate over until the third movie, when the Emperor has his unusual monologue where he talks about manipulating metachlorians to create life. What if Lucas had connected this brief moment to the even briefer mention of Anakin having no father in Episode 1? What if Lucas had made part of Anakin's journey in Episode 2 be trying to learn about his father? It could have been what led him to seek out his mother, not just because he missed her. And say she hadn't died right away, and say she'd been able to give Anakin some answers about the mystery surrounding his birth. So now, in this third movie, Anakin, armed with the knowledge, or lack of knowledge, about his true parentage, would have learned the truth about his father, as well as the reason behind the Emperor setting about creating Clone Army all those years ago. Suddenly, Episode 2 exists for a stronger and more compelling reason than simply to get Anakin and Padme hitched as it currently exists. There's a better reason now why it's called Attack of the Clones. Begun. The Clone War has. In a startling instant that would have rivaled Vader's reveal in Episode 5, we would most likely gasp when we realized that the Emperor had cloned and raised his perfect disciple in a master strategy covering Anakin's entire lifespan. It would have been an eerie echo to the clone army he had also assembled. And what better leader of a clone army than a clone of the Emperor himself? And suddenly, all that pseudo-scientific babble about metachlorians from Episode 1 has an unbelievable purpose to the entire saga. This revelation, by the way, could have been the deciding moment in the third film, the beginning of the end for Anakin. The question that he would have had to come to grapple with for the rest of the film would become whether it is in his nature to be evil. Is he determined by his maker, the Emperor, to be damned? Or does he still have a choice? His redemption in Episode 6 would have extended beyond merely one man's redemption, but that of human nature. Made all the more powerful by Luke's subsequent rejection of the same fate that befell his father, the Emperor's clone. It would have been a positive statement on our power to choose who we will become, more than our past or even some all-powerful force controlling our destinies, it's free will that represents the ultimate power in the universe, more than any Jedi or Sith or technological terror, it would all be insignificant next to the power of the force of our will. Lucas had all the pieces, he just didn't bother to put them together. Simple little changes, big consequences. And that's how to make metachlorians work.